Welcome back internet. Today we're looking at the very recent release, well five days ago as of the time of the recording of this video, uh, of XFCE 4.14. Feel free to let me know in the comments whether this uh, this face cam should stay or not. I've got this new webcam and I'm just trying some stuff out with it. And uh, mainly it's for conversational sort of podcast episodes that I do. Um, and again, more of more information. I've been teasing this for months. I really should get it out the way, but we're working on that. Um, but the funny thing is, even when I don't have a camera, I still find myself talking with my hands an awful lot when I'm just speaking straight to the mic. So uh, so let's have a look around and see what's changed because XFCE is actually the desktop environment that I've had the least amount of time to play with, like just ever. And, uh, and so whenever they bring out a new release, and it isn't all that often that they have a brand new stable release, I believe the last one was XFCE 4.12, and that was back in February of 2015. So it's been a minute since they brought out a, a gold stable version. Now I realize that a lot of distributions, including the one that I'm running on here, Manjaro, have been using sort of pre versions or I guess the more unstable versions of XFCE. A lot of distributions have opted to run XFCE 4.13. Some have opted to do uh, the pre-releases of 4.14. But as I was digging through Magia, uh, Magia 7, when that came out, uh, one of the release notes that they had was as soon as XFCE 4.14 went stable, they would actually dig into it and have a look. And so, uh, and so that definitely cued my interest for it. So I was looking out for it ever since, and here we are. So I'm gonna, so excuse me while I read some of the stuff off here, I'll jump back and forth as we go. Again, the webcam thing could be annoying, but uh, we'll, we'll go with it anyway. So um, some of the big work that's been done with XFCE has got to do with the window manager. Um, a lot has changed in the last uh, few years since XFCE had a release. Things like high, uh, high pixel density displays have become much more of a standard thing, uh, as well as, you know, very powerful graphics cards. Being able to work well with these things, render windows properly, um, be able to not have any screen tearing when you wobble windows around, when you play back video, that kind of thing. A lot of the, um, a lot of the main desktop environments are still struggling with trying to get that stuff to work in a way that is that feels smooth and feels native and feels uh, polished on the Linux side of things. And, uh, and so a lot of work has gone into the window manager in this release of XFCE um, to try and make it uh, a lot smoother. So that is the window manager is one huge part, but I would say probably the most work overall, I've got to stop opening the file manager when I'm just looking for things to talk about. Um, one of the biggest changes overall has come from just that process of going from GTK2, the toolkit that was around with uh, GNOME 2 back in the day, and GTK2 and all of, its, uh, all of its libraries, to now the toolkit of GTK3. I think, at least I'm guessing that all of the core components, according to the release notes of XFC, have now been ported from GTK2 to GTK3, and uh, and also from Dbus to uh, G Dbus. Again, just using more up-to-date components of uh, of software that basically runs the uh, the notification systems and a few other bits and pieces as well when it comes to uh, the the way that programs interact with the desktop environment. At least that's my hot take on it you'll probably correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, one thing that I did notice really quickly and just right here at the start of, uh, of when I was playing around with this release is that notifications look so much better on XFCE than they once did. Now, of course, this could also be because of the theming that I've chosen, but uh, let's jump into the settings here and just see what you can actually achieve with XFCE now. So I think there's a bit of a myth going around that lighter desktop environments like F XFCE somehow don't have the features that some of the full, uh, I guess the, the full bloated ones do, such as KDE Plasma or GNOME. And, uh, and I don't know, I don't think that's true anymore. And I think actually a lot of people from by the sounds of things and my general picking up around the internet, a lot of Linux users really like what XFCE provides when it comes to features but also being very straightforward. So um, just because I'm curious about it, um, these notifications look really good in my opinion. And the fact that you can move them around, I'll pick up a preview here. The fact that you can move these around and uh, if, you, if you want to put a fancy uh, window manager and get some effects behind this, you can, but just by default, the notifications look really nice. Still my all time favorite notifications are from the Ubuntu Unity days where you had that lovely notify OSD 
uh, system and you had notifications just fade in and fade out. Here they fade in and fade out as well. They just don't have that cool blur effect um, behind them. But you can um, customize so much of this. You can change animations. You can do. You can have them sliding in or sliding out. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff here. And again, you'll have to excuse me if this isn't stuff that's unique to 4.14 because uh, again, like I said, haven't spent a whole lot of time with XFCE. So you'll have to take this whole video with a bit of a noob grain of salt, but I'm really passionate about what they're doing and, uh, and I really dig it. Okay, so window manager. We've also, um, they've also done a lot of work behind the panels, especially when you're running a dual monitor setup like I am, you can now delineate which desktop you want to have as the primary desktop. That means the one that has all of your stuff on it, like a panel at the bottom. And with a nice theme, Honestly, in my opinion, you can really dig XFCE out of that mentality of like the classic Windows XP desktop computer era. Another big one for me that I really appreciate because this was a pain point the last time that I used XFCE was uh, color profiles. Previously, we didn't have a way to cleanly manage color profiles for color calibrations on different monitors. This bugged the heck out of me back in the day because my older Dell laptop that I had uh, had a really uh, unique panel and uh, and one that needed calibration. I had a calibration file that I found years ago that worked really well for me. And in a lot of other desktop environments, I could just plop it in. Uh, XFCE was not the case, except now it is. So that's fantastic news. Another area of the settings that underwent a fair bit of work in this particular release cycle was the display panel. Now again, the controls here haven't changed an awful lot, but what it come but the important thing that they've added, again, really useful to me. If the devil's in the details, is all about uh, saving monitor setups. So when you plug in and are constantly plugging in and unplugging a particular monitor setup, so in my case, I have a laptop that sits right here, and then I've got the monitor here that I'm speaking to now, uh, I am unplugging and plugging into this setup all the time. And the fact that XFCE will now actually save different monitor setups depending on how you're docked or how you're connected, where those different desktops are oriented, that's really, really helpful. So again, major props to the XFCE team for working this out because all of these little bits and pieces add up to a much more complete uh, desktop environment. And, um, and again, it's one of those things that you really don't notice until you're stuck in a desktop environment that doesn't do any of it. And then that's really frustrating. Jumping back to the window manager really quickly, the amount of tweaks that you can make to the window manager um, when it comes to the um, opacity, the, the appearance, the placement, how the windows are tiled, all that kind of thing is actually fairly decent. Like there's a fair few options here, but it doesn't bombard you with them right up the front. The choices that are made out of the box are pretty sane. And there has been some changes to the file manager. So I can justify opening up the file manager for the 15th time. And, uh, and those are simply that we have a few more keyboard shortcuts now for power users, so thank you. They've got a completely reworked path bar here where the path is not only visible when you're browsing around the, uh, the system, which a lot of users will really appreciate the fact that this isn't obscured, but they also have support for larger thumbnails now. So when you're browsing through a, a whole folder full of photos, you can really scale up the size of the icons that you're looking at without uh, without losing any performance and without them looking like a pixelated mess. So then there's a bunch of stuff that XFC refers to as their goodies, which are, uh, I guess, all the extra little bits that tie onto a desktop environment to make it that much sweeter. So uh, notifications, like I mentioned, already have gone through a lot of work. So I'm not gonna labor that point now, but the fact that they have uh, support for notification logging. So now you can actually jump back into the desktop environment and have a look to see uh, what notifications are left over, I really, really like. Because again, it's one of those features that almost all modern desktop environments have. And the fact that now they have a notification manager and they have the ability to hit that do not disturb button and not get any notifications, that's huge. They've improved other little bits and pieces as well, like the little built-in clipboard manager, they've uh, the, the screenshot um, tool that they have built into XFCE, a bunch of other little bits and pieces as well. But I guess my overall impressions, like this isn't a complete rethinking of the XFCE desktop. In fact, I'd argue that it's the last thing that anybody wants from this particular desktop environment, because at the end of the day, the people that are using uh, XFCE as a desktop environment want performance primarily, and they want functionality. 
And if XFC can, can continue to provide that in spades the way that they have been, um, I don't care if XFC release a new uh, desktop environment that's complete and stable every few years. Because if it's honestly, if it's this stable, the people that use it will appreciate it. We don't want new features all the time. We just want features that work well and that can work reliably. Um, so I'm curious and, uh, and, and I guess I'm going to have to experiment with this a little bit more to see if XFCE could become a primary desktop environment for me because it definitely does point out to you how slow slash maybe bloated sometimes either in user experience or user interface or just performance uh, some of the other desktop environments can be when uh, when the little rat here might be all you need. I think for me the most valuable things for me are going to be screen real estate, uh, how quickly can I launch things from the keyboard, uh, how much does the, uh, does the desktop environment, how well does it integrate with all the different types of programs that I use, whether they're KDE based, GTK based or otherwise. And I wonder if there's any significant difference in power consumption because new laptop, very powerful processor. I wonder what difference that makes. Those of you with XFCE experience, feel free to comment down below. And, uh, and like I said, feel free if this webcam thing ain't working for you, I'm more than happy to get rid of it either. But if you like it, let me know. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I will see you all in the very next video. Peace out.